Hey everyone, welcome to the Microsoft 365 Copilot Connection. My name is Nick Harris and I'm a Senior Copilot Cloud Solution Architect with Microsoft. Today I want to navigate you through a use case, a specific use case that I directly have been working with in relation to one of my customer engagements that I'm actively delivering right now. And I want to show how I directly combined multiple Copilot capabilities together to streamline my efforts, save me time, and get all of the content and materials and demos ready to go in a quick, simple, and easy way. Now, general note, the capabilities I show in this particular video will require a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, which is the $30 license that we directly make available to our enterprise customers. And in this case, I will be using multiple experiences. As you see on my screen, I will be starting off with the researcher agent, and we will be navigating through a few different app experiences to make modifications and changes, and finally get down to overall demo content and presentation presentation material with Copilot in Word and PowerPoint. Now, before I submit my prompt to Researcher, I want to talk to all of the content that is in the prompt. So here it is on the screen for all of you to reference. General note, I didn't type all of this. This was a prompt aggregated by a wide variety of resources. We've been actively meeting with our customer over the last few weeks. They provided us notes. They've provided us user feedback on areas that the users are interested to know more about. We've aligned agendas and information for the session overall, logistics. And all of that is now aggregated into a single form prompt that I will submit over to Copilot. And as you can see, the purpose of this is to have three use cases that Copilot generates for us so we can have working scenarios during one hour sessions with our customer. We will do initial 10 to 15 minutes of education content and then have our customer users go into breakout groups where they will work on prompting. They'll actively work on creating prompts and modifying prompts against a particular use case scenario that we generate. And the use case scenario is going to be generated by Copilot. So feeding it all of this rich contextual data will only make the demo materials and content that we're aligning to more rich in terms of what we can give back to the customer in our education sessions. So I've aggregated all of this information and I'm going to feed it into the researcher to see what it gives me back. So I've submitted my prompt to the researcher agent and within this researcher agent experience, after your initial prompt, you will receive some contextual discovery questions. If you have any additional information you want to feed the researcher agent to help guide it along the way even further, you can. In this case, I'm just going to click go ahead and we'll see what it gives us back. Okay, so we've received a response and I'm not going to go into very minute detail on exactly what happens with researcher agent. If you want to see how the researcher agent works and functions, please go check out our previous video on the researcher agent for all of those key details. As we see though on the current screen, all of the strategy and plan and the thoughts and information that the researcher agent has directly navigated through in order to generate the rich data and detail against our use cases and scenarios that we will leverage within this education session for our customers. So as we've now reviewed all of these key particular areas, scrolling down into the output, right? And of course, this output is very rich. There's a lot of data and detail here. And I have noticed, I've done a quick review of this. Um, it's a little bit too rich. And that brings something to mind is I've noticed I've started to use the researcher agent more often as my starting point. And I sort of have to pick and choose when do I use the researcher versus when do I just use the normal co-pilot a general AI assistant. And my mentality now is if I need really rich detail, I'll start with the researcher. If I just have some quick hits or I need to modify some language or I need to search for some data and content or summarize data and information, I use the general AI assistant because the output of the general AI assistant will be much shorter. So let's scroll down. Let's go ahead and look at, you know, we have some additional sections we don't really need, like key definitions and concepts. I don't really need any of that included. Maybe useful for like end users, right, that I'm presenting to, but uh, maybe it's like a reference resource. Or well, really after here are the use cases aligned to the customer feedback that we've directly provided in our initial prompt. And we can see what Copilot has done. It's given us, or the researcher agent specifically, 
Uh, our scenario overview gives us information on why it matters, some sample broad prompts, context to that as well, maybe you know some step-by-steps in order to navigate through that, and some key things that we can consider. So we review all of these use cases, right? And I will say, I noticed within these use cases, it doesn't really have many prompt examples. So uh, let's go ahead and prompt a little bit more and get some prompt examples uh, that we can then leverage in a presentation out of this. So in this same conversation, again, I have now sent another prompt to refine your previous output down to the, just the three use cases. Within the use cases specifically, expand each use case to provide five contextual prompts aligned to the use case that I can further use and provide to my customer to give them additional value. And this is more refined. This is more what I'm looking for so I can have this particular key detail and information included within my PowerPoint slide deck. I want to start within these breakout room sessions and scenarios with very broad prompts to get people started, but also educate them that based on their individual context, they need to modify and add additional key details. And having some examples that include additional contextual variants in this case can really help align them on how to modify their prompts in different forms based on their needs. So we review all of this information, we're good to go. Now we can aggregate all of this into a Copilot page. So in my initial prompt, I've scrolled up just a little bit. I'm going to click on the Copilot pages icon, edit in pages, and now we have our initial output in a Copilot page. I'm also going to scroll down and I'm going to send the next output for our additional contextual prompts and add that to the page as well. And so now that key output is added at the bottom. And this is where I can either modify the materials in here to remove data I don't need out of this particular Copilot page or directly send this Copilot page over to a Word document to make my modifications. One of the new options we've just rolled out as a part of Copilot Pages is the ability to directly send this output to a Word document. And this is important, especially if you have a use case scenario where you need a presentation that you want to align within your own customer demos and customer sessions. So in the top right hand corner, you now see the Word icon. I can click on this Word icon. It directly sends that information over to a Word document that's all uploaded directly into my OneDrive experience. And I can then use Copilot in Word to make my modifications from there. So I've spent about two to three minutes modifying the overall output in a manual way within this particular Word document. I've removed all of the data and detail that I do not require. This was about a 30 page document. It's now uh, six pages. I've also taken the second output of five sample contextual prompts aligned to each use case and aligned them directly within each use case section as you see in this Word file. And so now we are going to move forward and we're going to leverage this Word document to generate a brand new presentation and validate what particular information, data, and detail we could then leverage within our customer presentation session here in the future. So I've opened up a brand new PowerPoint file. This will also be uploaded directly within my OneDrive. I could have created it directly in SharePoint as well if I chose. But since we already have the Word file aligned with the rich information that we require, I'm going to create a presentation with the file. So let's generate a presentation with the file. And one of the new key updates that we've just included is the ability to now select a presentation template. If I click on change design here, this allows me to select from particular templates either from my organization or directly from Microsoft 365. Now in this key example, I do not have any presentations from my organization, though I know many organizations really want to focus on their brand. So that is something that your organization can put into place if you so choose. But in this case, I'm just going to select from Microsoft 365. And as you can see, we have direct brand templates available to start from. And so let's select this citation design here, select design, and now we're going to select our Word file. And then let's go ahead and enter additional prompting criteria to ensure that Copilot and PowerPoint aligns the rich information in the way that we require. All right, so for the particular prompt that we will align, as well as referencing the Word file that we've generated, we want to create a presentation with a section of slides for each particular use case. 
And within each section, include the following slides. We want our scenario overview slide, which describes the scenario. We want a slide for why it matters, which explains the importance and relevance of the scenario. We want a slide for the broad and contextual prompts related to the use case scenario. And finally, a slide for a breakout session, which will indicate to our user audience they'll navigate into their breakout rooms. The narrative builder experience in PowerPoint then starts to generate the overall narrative for our presentation. And as we now see directly aligned to our document content, our particular key sections of information, including the particular key slides that we require. On first glance, this does look accurate. We will have future videos to talk to this particular narrative builder experience in PowerPoint, but for now, I trust what it's given me, so let's generate our slides. The narrative builder experience then starts to build the overall slide deck. It's leveraging that rich information from the Word document as its main content source, also leveraging its trained data in order to aggregate information and ensure that the slides are rich in information and aligned to what we require. We then now see the initial first draft for our presentation. So we can elect to just review really quickly on this high level view. We can click keep it to then start navigating into our slides as well. Maybe for example, I don't really like the, uh, the black theme here. So uh, let's go ahead and use designer. You can get design suggestions as well to start reviewing and modifying the overall design. And again, if you start from your own company branded presentation, this would adhere to your slide layouts that are company branded. What I'm really focused on though, is ensuring that the overall content is correct and accurate. We can validate via the notes some of the information. We have the full scenario overview. We have some key points on the slide. Again, I can modify with designer. Let's look at the why it matters slide. Okay, some quick notes on why it matters. Again, I could worry about formatting and such later on if I chose. A broad and contextual prompts. Now, this is where I see we have some modifications that we'll need to make. My purpose is to have the verbatim prompts directly on the slide. Now, the good thing is they're already in the slide notes. That's one key thing that I could consider and leverage. I could just copy and paste out the slide notes and put it directly in the slide and reformat a little bit. If I want a little bit more of the, the rich information from the Word document as well, I can leverage Copilot in PowerPoint to reference that Word document and summarize all the key details out of it or pull the key points that I require. For example, I can say summarize slash and we'll navigate to our file here creating Copilot use cases. And as you see, now we have that direct document loaded in our Copilot and PowerPoint chat-based experience because this also has access to your work data. Now, I don't see the direct prompts listed, so let's prompt again and be a little bit more specific in terms of what we want. There we go. As you now see, for use case one, provide the verbatim prompts listed in the Word file. I want both the broad and the contextual prompts. And you can now have the verbatim prompts directly aligned from that Word file. You could copy and paste from there as well. There's multiple ways that you could go about this. So that's all for me for today, everyone. I will be navigating through this particular use case today, doing a presentation for my customers. So hopefully this helps to show you some of the power that you can leverage Copilot for across a wide variety of app experiences. I very much appreciate the support. We just hit 200 subscribers as well. I never really thought that this would happen, but glad that all of you are enjoying the content. Of course, as always, please like, share, subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, everyone.